Hello friends and welcome back to part 18 of the series where we'll be creating an Instagram clone in Flutterflow and Superbase. So in this video, we'll be seeing how we can use the concept of Superbase triggers to add to our like count whenever a user likes the post and reflect our new like count here. So if you go to our Superbase dashboard, our table editor, and we take a look at our posts database structure, you can see that we have a column here called like count. Currently, it's all zero. We also have a post like relation where whenever a user likes the post, a new row will be inserted here. So how can we make it such that when a new row is inserted here, we want to update the post, the like count of the post and increment it by one. So Superbase triggers are the perfect tool we need to implement this sort of functionality. But what exactly are Superbase triggers? Well, to put it simply, Superbase triggers are simply ways to detect when an event occurs on a table in your Superbase database. For example, when a new row is inserted here or when a new row is updated or deleted, then you can use a Superbase trigger to fire off another function that you want to do to sort of either update the existing table or to update your other tables in Superbase. So, here, what we want to do is when a new row is inserted in our post like relation, we want to update the like count of our post. And likewise, when the user unlikes a post and the row is deleted from our post like relation, then we want to go into our post table and actually decrease the like count by one. So we can make use of super base triggers to effectively implement this solution. All right, so how can we create super base triggers? Well, we do that in our SQL editor, which is the same one we used to create our views. All right, and now we have to write some PostgreSQL code. Well, one of my best friends when writing custom code is ChatGPT. So as you can see over here, I've already given ChatGPT a prompt. So this is a very long prompt explaining the func exact functionality of what I wanted to implement, which I explained just now as well, just in words to ChatGPT over here. So you can pause the video to take a look and read through this. If not, I'm also, if not, I've also linked this prompt down in the video description down below so that you can also give it a go and prompt ChatGPT for an answer. So ChatGPT is really awesome. It was able to take in my prompt and translate that into code. So I can actually go ahead and copy this code and I'll paste it inside my SQL editor over here. I will also rename this query to update like, update likes. So basically this is the function to update our likes. So if I click on run, you can see that is success, no rows returned, meaning that our function has been successfully implemented. But that is not all. We also have to actually create the triggers themselves. So we have to copy this as well, copy this code create a new snippet and we paste this here and we can rename this create or update likes trigger then we can run this as well and success no return that is what we like to see now if we go back to our database under triggers you can see now that we have two triggers over here so that shows us that our triggers have been successfully implemented and are up and running. So let me, so for those of you who are interested in really getting down into like what the function actually does and understanding the function, let me just give you a quick rundown of this update likes function. All right, so this line basically means to create the function called update likes count. And the return type is a trigger then this is a conditional statement. TG underscore OP just basically means the event that's being fired off. So if it's an insert event, this means that a new row is being inserted. Then, so this basically checks if it's the insert event, if a new row is being inserted, then we want to update our post table and we want to set our like column, our like count column to be equal to like count plus one. This is just basically increasing our like count by one. 
but we only want to set the row where our ID column is equal to our post ID column inside our new row that has been inserted into our post like relation table. Additionally, we want to also filter the row where our poster by column in our post table is equal to the liked by column inside our new row inserted into our post like relation table. Then we just have to return new. This is the default statement. We always have to return. Now, this second part, else if the event is a delete event, so if an, the row has been deleted from our post like relation table, then we want to likewise update our post table. Oops, our post table. But now we want to set the like count to be equal to like count minus one. So we are decreasing the like count by one. And this is also the same filtering function. But now you notice that this is old instead of new. So new is basically used to refer to the new row has been inserted, while old refers to the old row that has been deleted. So if the event is a delete event, you use old. If it's an insert event, you use new to refer to the new row. Yep, then likewise, you have to return the old row over here. So that's basically the basic rundown for this update likes function. Now we move on to the trigger. This is just basically creating the trigger events. So for this trigger, we are creating the trigger called increment like count. After, and this trigger will be fired off after a new row has been inserted, after any new row has been inserted on our post like relation table. And for this second trigger is called the decrement like count trigger, which will occur after any row has been deleted from our post like relation table. So basically that's what this query does. Alright, so I hope that I was able to explain it clearly and you managed to get all of that as well. If you also like to learn more about Superbase triggers, I also recommend the official Superbase documentation over here about Postgres triggers. And if you also like to really dive deep into how to implement Postgres triggers, I recommend the official Postgres SQL documentation as well, documentation to create trigger. So you can go ahead and take a look into this rabbit hole as well, if you're interested. So we can go back to our table editor, and now we can actually try going into our Flutterflow test mode and testing it out ourselves. Okay, so test mode is just loaded up, and let's see what happens now if we like this post. So if you like this post, it's not updated here because I forgot to update it in our Flutterflow UI, but if we go back to our super base and under posts, Hmm, seems like the like count did not get increased. And I know why this is the case. It is actually because in our SQL editor, in our update likes function over here, we should not have added this additional filter over here since it's not necessary. We just need to check if the post ID is the same. So actually we can remove those two, then we can Go ahead and run it again. Then we run the trigger to update the trigger. So there's this error over here because our triggers already exist. So after creates, we can put or replace. Same for this one. Then we can run it and you should see that there's success, no errors. Yep, no errors returned. Let me just delete all the rows here first in our post like relation table. But since I manually deleted them, it also triggered the actual triggers over here. So I'll set it all to zero manually first to sort of reset our project. All right. So now if we go into our test mode and let's say we like this axolotl post, you can see that a new row is inserted here. And for the post ID, we can check this post ID. So is this post that got liked? And we can see that the like count has increased by one. Now, what happens if we unlike the post? You can see that the like count now goes back to zero. 
So awesome, that shows that our actual triggers are working perfectly. Alright, but our problem now is that whenever we like a new post or unlike the post, this likes over here at the bottom left hand corner is not updated. And why is that so? That is because inside our post component, our post details row is being passed in through a component parameter. This means that whenever we like this icon, this post details row is not being updated to get the new data from the new post row over here. So it's not being updated in real time and our likes are remaining stagnant over here. So how we can fix this is that instead of passing the, our data of our row through a component parameter, we can pass only the ID. So we pass the ID inside our component parameter and then in the post container itself, we will query our super base for the actual data. So let's try doing that now. So we will edit this and instead of this being the post details, we will remove this. And instead, we'll change it to post ID. For the type, it'll be of type integer. And the default value will, let's just give it zero for now. But this should never be null. So now that we have the post ID, then we can go inside our post container and we'll do a back end query. This will be a super base query and it will query our full post view. So the query type, instead of a list of rows, it will just be a single row. And then we also have to give it some filters. So the filter should be where our ID is equal to our component parameter post ID. Then we have to go ahead and relink all of these widgets over here. So let's start with the circle image. So for this path, it will be our full post view row image path. For this, it will be our full post view row username. You can give it a default value as well. Then for the image over here, the main image of the post, it will be full post view row image path. Oops. And this should actually be not image path, but profile pic. Now we can go ahead and do it for the likes over here. So this will now be our full post view row like count. You can see that we have a bunch of errors also, so let's do them one by one. So first is the super base database action. And this is because this filter is now invalid. So we have to give it our component parameter post ID. We close that. So this is also invalid now because the post ID is no longer there. So we have to replace it with our component parameter post ID for this matching rows as well. So give it a while to update. You should see that we now have two errors. So then next is this, which is the rich text. Ah, yes, this should be full post view row username. And last but not least, it's for the description. So full post view row description. All right, so now that we changed our component parameter, we have to actually go back to our home page and select our post component and you have to give and input in the post ID. So for the post ID, it will simply be full post view row ID over here. Oops, seems like it didn't update. So full post view row ID. And then we also use this component in our post detail page. So this over here should be post detail row ID. OK, 
Okay, and one more thing that we have to do is we have to go back to our post component. And for our toggle icon, we have to act, open the action flow editor. And now what we want to do is that whenever we toggle the icon, you want to you want to search for refresh database request action. And the widget that we want to select is our post container. So this basically just refreshes the query on our post container. So that ensures that so that it ensures that the UI over here is updated as well. So we can reload it one last time and it should be working now. All right, so now if we like this post, you can see that the number of likes increases by one. If we unlike it, you can see that now it decreases by zero, by one, sorry, and becomes zero. Let's see, this was a previous post that we liked. If we dislike it now or unlike it, it goes to zero. All right, great. So now everything is working perfectly just like we wanted. And I'm as happy as this smiling ex lotto over here. All right. Yep. So that's it for today's video. So in the next video, we'll actually be working on our comment functionality to allow users to comment on posts using this comment button, this chat button over here. So I hope you're excited for that. And I'll see you in the next video.